adversity is what built character. Our hands are tied to what Mother Nature gives us. And when it comes to vines, you want to not give it all. Because if you give it all, it's just like other human beings. When you have it all, you're not as ambitious, you're not as hungry, and you're not gonna wanna do a lot with yourself. You're just gonna coast through life and be happy. day when you face some adversity you know how to deal with the bad times of life grapes just like human beings depending on where you get raised you become what you become faced adversity, when you have had adversity, when you persevered over adversity, you can sympathize with so much of life. I think that the bad part that I remember is the lack of resources and the lack of opportunities was really prevalent so you could see it. I came from a very desolate little town in the middle on the heartland of Michoacan, in the dry area we call it Tierra Caliente. And just like the story of Mexico, you're either rich or you are really poor. My parents, the only way my dad saw any sort of future for us was to leave the town. Because he would do everything from ranching, field working. He was trying to make ends meet and that wasn't enough. And it wasn't enough for feeding three mouths. So the first trip my dad made to New York, he got to Tijuana, jumped the border, went to LA, worked at car washing, cleaning offices, and doing little odd jobs. My dad went to New York back and forth. He hates the cold, so as soon as the first white dust falls, he's back home. And my dad had always thought about raising us in the States, and we were very fortunate that my uncle, his older brother, was living in Cambria. And sure enough, my dad got himself to Cambria, and started working and it was pretty hard for him. My mom soon followed, probably about a year later. And so she decided that, you know, that was a really good place to raise a family. So it was New Year's Eve of 89 in Tijuana and guns are just going off everywhere. So we hardly slept in the hotel room that we stayed at because I was scared. I, I was moving from my little tiny village and going into a city of Tijuana and trying to make it across the border. I mean, Michoacan, the area that I'm from, is known as cartel land purposely because it did become the vacuum of territory fight between a bunch of families and cartels. Uh, we didn't feel like we got really that affected by it, but the timing to leave couldn't have been any better. So I ended up like leaving Mexico in second grade and I came up getting in the bus with my dad and my little sister. We rode from my hometown of Michoacan all the way to Tijuana. It was like a three-day bus ride. And then we ended up jumping the border in a little VW bus and made it to LA the following day. And so my dad was at least very protective of us to make sure that when he gave us up to a perfect stranger, we didn't have to run the hills. We didn't have to swim the river. He paid extra to make sure that we were in a car with a bunch of other people. and. We got over, you know, all packed like sardines, but we made it over and nothing happened to us. Well, this was our house from fifth grade all the way through the end of sophomore year in high school. So we had my whole family, there's six kids and there's two my parents and then we had an aunt living with us so you know there was always about eight to nine people living in this little 
place at any given time. Experiencing life like this, it's always in the back of your mind and that is kind of the motivation that I use that I don't want to ever go through that experience ever again. But more so than anything now having my own child, I want to give them the most that I can of opportunities and options in life. And I don't ever want to feel like I can fail and go back to giving him an experience like I had here. Right behind this wall. This is where um, Tia Maria, Tio Poncho, um, Tia Chio, Tio Jaime will sleep in this room. This was the bathroom that we had for everybody in here. And then I slept because I made a room in here. This window was open. Come in. And then there used to be a wall right here. Oh, and then, and then that used to be your bedroom? Right here. This is I had a mattress right here. That was my bed. Wow. Yeah. Well, where's the kitchen? The, the kitchen's stuff. back here. The kitchen's, um, the kitchen, when we lived here, the, this was our kitchen right here. We had a refrigerator right here. We had a sink right here and we had our cabinets. Being in this confined little space with so many personalities, it helped me kind of endure a lot of character changes. And it's a place where I think it's kind of defining who I'm becoming and why I'm becoming the person that I have become and want to strive to be right here. Wow. Pretty small, buddy. That's why I tell you you're freaking lucky. Um, Alright, let's go outside. Yeah. Yeah, why did you? Why did you? Why did you? I was rich in love always. Either my uncles that were here or my aunt that was here was always loving us and spoiling us a little bit. But love was never an issue. The resources, that was the main headache. But love, we never lacked it for sure. Mira, la, la verdad, me siento muy orgulloso de él. Muy orgulloso porque se fue por el camino que yo quería y que yo he querido. Todos mis hijos, pero él, como que, de todos modos, él. De tan chiquito que me lo traje, miró la pobreza que, que hubo en México para nosotros y el sacrificio que yo hice para que él viniera aquí. Es una, una un orgullo que me hace llorar a mí. Yo estoy orgulloso de mí mismo por lo que yo he hecho. He hecho mucho, tú sabes que yo he hecho mucho. Dos casas, otra propiedad, Esta casa que se está pagando, digamos que es mía, aunque todavía no está pagada, pero aquí estoy en ella. ¿Qué es el gran, el sacrificio más grande que hayas hecho? El sacrificio que hice más fue cuando ya me vine aquí a California. ¿Oh, sí? Este... Pero, pues, ¿qué fue el sacrificio? El sacrificio fue no saber hablar inglés, no saber ni comunicarme con la gente, a puras señas, aguantar hambre porque no, no sabía pedir de comer. El orgullo más grande que me has dado, mi hijo, creo que te lo he dicho bastantes veces, que no quería verte sufrir como yo en el campo, o recibiendo regañadas de los padrones. Eso es lo que yo pedía para usted y le sigo pidiendo y le doy gracias a mi Dios. Verlo donde está, que yo, rebasé, yo pasé a su abuelo, yo lo pasé. Y, y yo le pedí a usted y a sus hermanos les he pedido, pásenme ahora ustedes a mí y creo que lo están logrando. Gracias sí. a mi Dios. Yo siempre quería, como toda mamá o papá, una mejor educación para mis hijos, una vida mejor. Y yo siempre me quedé, porque como yo no pude ir al, al colegio, a la escuela, nada más la gran school, yo siempre creía, quería que ellos tuvieran una vida mejor. Y, y eso fue mi, mi sueño, 
de que yo quería, yo desde chica yo quería venir a vivir a los Estados Unidos. ¿Cómo uh, te iba a preguntar ahorita que estamos, uh -huh. más que nada, se me fue el tiempo de la pregunta? Pero cuando dejé ir a la escuela, ¿cómo te sentiste tú? Me sentí bien triste porque pensé que ya, ya no iba a volver a la escuela y pensé que ya no iba... Yo quería que fuera algo, que hiciera algo con su vida, un negocio o, o una carrera, porque sí me sentí muy triste. Um, porque yo quería que él siguiera en la escuela. Y, y yo sé que lo triste fue que él podía ir a alguna universidad, pero como no tenía su social security number, los papeles. Los, la, no tenía su green card y, y este y eso fue. Es, es. Ya tenía tres años haciendo vino y ustedes no sabían uh -huh. ni la idea de cuánto vino. Sí, nos vino. quería sorprender, nos dio la sorpresa de él, que estaba haciendo su propio vino. My, mis pasos es, uh, my steps on my path in life, on the path that I carved out to do and by choosing this career, by paying my respect back to the family, Like, I come here and I do this with my mom. We'll look at pictures when it's getting ready time to bottle the next batch. And so sometimes the, there is a significance behind the time with the picture. Having, like, the picture of the whole family united on the 2012, we bottled that in 2014, and that was the year I actually became a permanent resident. Since I was the last one to naturalize in the country, I was like, we all now are officially <laughs> united. Due to the adversity of being brought here illegally, I was at the crossroads of like, I can go get a four year degree with the money I have saved, or I'll dump it into four barrels and experiment. Last name being Torres. Torres is taken in Spain. It's like Mondavi to California with a couple hundred years of history. So I couldn't use the last name. So I decided to go follow the heritage You know, my dad being more of the Spanish blood person in the house and, and do Tempranillo. I've now grown into being able to produce and bring in Quirion, Mano Straw, Garnacha Tinta clones. So those are direct connections to the old world. It, it let me be uniquely different from the rest of the crew, uh, but I also wanted to showcase something that does very well here. I've had a couple friends tell me, hey, you've never been to Spain, but Toro region in Spain is very similar to Paso Robles. But this spoke to my heart and my soul ever since my parents left me in Mexico with my aunt. I Every night I remember looking out and just wishing to be with them again, looking up at the sky. So we have this crazy cool observatory that was sitting here that somebody left behind. And the cool part about it is like, I got to plant Querignan, one of my favorite varietals from my favorite region of Pure Rod in Spain. So for me, that was kind of like, it was meant to be. The, the natural concentration of the fruit here creates this dark impacting color like blood. And it has to do with, this is kind of like a perfect example of what's underneath the soil. This is a big, just rock that is underneath that got turned over with the tractors. But this is, imagine the vine has to go through it and just kind of anchor itself. And so by that and doing that is struggling. So the concentration of everything, flavor, color, and the natural chemistry going on here, it's very special. I think the, the romantic aspect of my winemaking approach is letting it be a natural beauty. You know, I always compliment my wife that she looks more beautiful with all the makeup on. I think more than anything, really embracing nature and trying to do everything as natural as possible is the biggest thing for us. Using whole cluster, using the barrels that I use, uh, aging it for a particular time on each variety. We try to go natural fermentation, native with whatever the berries are carrying in their skin. Just like raising kids. You know, you teach them what you want to teach them and you let them make their own decisions. And if it needs a little kick in the ass, then we'll do it. But if it doesn't, we'll just let it be. Being a father now has really helped uh, see everything a little bit better in perspective. Porque ya ahorita yo estoy como un niño. 
de ver, de que yo trabajé lo más que pude para que ahorita él tenga lo que tiene también. Gracias a Dios. Yo le decía, no le tenga miedo al trabajo, le dije. Y es más, si no se mantiene, si no se puede hacer rico, no puede hacer riqueza, le dije, la tortilla con sal es buena con salecita y limoncito. Le dije, así, de la, así me la comía yo, le dije. Le dije, pero nunca nos faltó que comer, gracias a Dios. I only started with four barrels of wine when I started making wine. And look at where it's getting us. We bought this building, we own this building, and we're moving in here with all the barrels from the other winery now. Do you understand that? Yeah. Mommy and Daddy has done a lot of sacrifice to get here, and look, <laughs> our new home. Yep. And like I said, I started with four barrels. And by the time Papi Poncho and I got together one time to show him how much wine I had, I had probably like 20 barrels full. And then I had a big stack of brand new barrels. And you know how much each barrel cost? $10, $60, or $80? How about $1,000 each? Whoa. That's a lot of money. And Papi Poncho started adding up like how much each barrel was there, and there was about 16 barrel, so Papi Poncho was surprised at how much money we were investing into it. I've been a big fan of the underdog story, of the racks to riches stories. I believe that I think that's where the American dream feeling comes from. I think that the adversity of like coming here with nothing and working towards something, and that's all it is. It's just, you're gonna get fight through it, and you got to show up and do it every day. Every little goal that I put in front of me, I have the opportunity and the choice to make it real. But the foundation of the American dream will die when you really divide us and at the same time impede it from happening. Because the reality of it is the American dream is to build one generation better than the last generation and keep that ball rolling. I am a father to a six-year-old boy that I'm gonna let him have the options and opportunities that I lacked at times growing up. I'm going to own my own vineyard, my own winery. I don't want him to be the one picking the grapes. And that's what a lot of Americans share. So if I don't have him picking the grapes, who's gonna pick the grapes? Well, I think one big thing is I would hope that other people in the situation that Edgar perhaps has been raised in see that it's possible. I think that's huge to be able to see that you truly can follow your passions, follow your dreams, maybe not necessarily have the opportunities that a lot of people in the business have had that he you know, didn't have growing up, but was still able to become successful and do everything that he has right now. I mean, it's giant. Basically that you, I mean, it sounds so cliche, but you work hard and you can achieve what you want to achieve. You know, nothing was given to Edgar. Nothing's going to be given to him besides opportunities, but you have to put in the effort to make it happen. That, well, that was and me. I think that's something you're not, that... You're not going to give me anything? Nope, nothing. <laughs> nothing. Not, n ha, not ha, one thing. very funny. Let it rip. They're dancing. They are not dancing, Mom. No, what are they They're doing? Battling. They're battling. Oh, sorry. They're battling. Okay. My mom has said it where I've had visions when I was a little kid that I wanted okay. more. In the last two years, I've learned that I jumped into a rich man games with no money. I early on knew I had to stand out besides the skin color that I carry just by being unique and different from them with the style of wines that I was going to produce because I look at who I married, I look at who is around me, I look at who I work with, and I look at myself. And we're a byproduct of those two people that made us. And if they give us a life under their roof for a while, whether we want to accept it or not, we're a little bit like mom, we're a little bit like dad because I've been a product of great coaches, great teachers, and they made the difference for me to stay in this path and lane that I'm walking. 
and if you can leave something for someone else to keep caring for you, or if you leave some sort of mark behind it, it leaves a note for the next generation to pick up and read and keep going with it. I don't care if my name's not around after I die. I just care that whoever I surrounded myself with made something better for themselves than if they didn't have that interaction with me. As I served as an example for them.